So you, you're you're saying that there are there are there are priests uh, that are that are living in Syracuse, former priests or current priests that are living there that have been uh, have found. found, found allegations of okay. Yes. All right. Yep. And, and you're saying that the diocese is is housing them, or they're just living there? What What is your claim? Uh, they're living in a diocesan residence. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I I I can't. I understand that. I guess. Um, uh, obviously, I'm not trained in in religion, but uh, the Catholic Church has a point where a child becomes culpable uh, for certain things, becomes old enough, mature enough to be able to know the difference between right and wrong. And it almost seems as if, I mean, what the, I think the, the priest is saying, uh, Cunningham is saying, is that that's what I was talking about. But it didn't seem that way, right? Uh, not to me. Not to me. Um, you know, and, and he had multiple opportunities to, to reframe his answer or be more direct and specific about it. And the words that, and the words that he chose were, were under oath and they were specific. Um, and, you know, if he, had a, he, he could have gone back and changed that statement too. Yeah. He knew from the victim in that courtroom how hurtful that was. Yeah. I had a deposition that was given in 2011. Uh, anyone who's familiar with depositions know that um, they're very difficult by nature, and that's not an excuse. They just are. Yeah. And um, Bishop Cunningham immediately responded to the article because the article in, seemed to in, indicate or give the impression that the bishop feels that any child who has been abused is responsible. And from statements in the deposition, um, he understands that people could draw that conclusion. So he immediately wrote a letter to the people of the diocese, which is found on our website and throughout the media. Yeah, I have the letter. I have that here. Yeah. He wishes his words were different. And that by no way does he believe that any child who is abused is responsible. And that any adult who abuses a child is wrong. Uh, and by wrong, he doesn't mean it's not a crime. It's right. a crime. It's sin. It's wrong. Um, and so some may say the letter is backtracking or so forth. The fact of the matter is Bishop Cunningham is human like you and I. Mm -hmm. And wanted people to know that he wished he had said different words. And he wanted to put on record what he feels, what he believes, and he's done that uh, very clearly. Tell me uh, one, one of the one of the statements that uh, I read in the in the paper that was uh, difficult was that he, he had said that I, I it's hard for me to answer because I don't know what is, was in the child's heart. Uh, I believe that was the wording. I'm I'm paraphrasing. Um, yeah, that, and, that, and that, that that's part a of that, yeah. His depositions are very lengthy. Mm -hmm. um, And throughout the deposition, yeah. um, I've been told myself on different occasions, you're given generic or general examples, um, different sets of scenarios, um, and you're asked to respond to it, and then you go back to a specific mm -hmm. question. Um, and these were uh, general, in some ways, general statements. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, he said what he said. And yeah. He's, yeah. he's not changing that. What he's saying is, I don't... The things I believe are in the letter that I'm stating today, and they weren't sorry, stated on Sunday, and what are posted on our website. Uh, he's very clear, and he will state and restate, no child is responsible for being sexually abused. Yep. Um, and, you know, any adult who harms a child uh, is wrong. And th there really isn't any more to say about that. And it's very, he's saddened by the fact yep. that these words have uh, confused people. And that's why he wanted to come out with the letter and say, this is what I said. He's very clear in the letter. Right. I wish I could have said it differently. I wish I had said it differently. In fairness, I, I, in, in fairness, um, many of us have been in depositions, and they um, they can be very difficult. There's no doubt about it. And I'm not even can. I think they almost always are well, difficult. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's why they're very neat. Um, uh, we did speak with Kevin Brainy uh, this morning, and this is the uh, and he is working with the group, uh, maybe heading the group that's asking for the bishop to step down. He made a, a charge uh, this morning saying that uh, that there are there are uh, former priests who are, in his words, guilty of sexual crimes uh, that are being housed by the diocese. Um, can you respond to that? Well, I guess I don't understand how there are. 
been very public and reported in the past that there are priests whose faculties have been removed because they have had a credible allegation of child sexual abuse. Got it. These are allegations that have come forward uh, about 30, 40 years after the fact. There isn't anything, unfortunately, that the district attorney's offices can do. Um, district attorneys know uh, who these individuals are. They know about the allegations. And because they're not registered sexual offenders or even those who have been accused of abuse, they they do have to live somewhere. Got it, <laughs> um, yeah. So it's not a matter of the diocese, it's housing. Um, it's very public. Um, the fact that three suit faculties are removed live in this community, and uh, there isn't anything secret about that, so I'm, I'm somewhat confused by that. So basically, you're not, you're, what you're saying is uh, you're not kicking these, after an allegation is credible, the obviously statute of limitations gone now, uh, you're not just going to kick them to the street, um, they live within the confines of, uh, of something that is owned by the diocese. Some do, and some do not. Okay. Some live in their own residence. I'm assuming they would have a choice to do with... Yeah. More canonically, if a priest has been removed and their faculties have been removed, and this gets a little complicated for the short time I have, uh -huh. they haven't been removed from the clerical state, which means lay aside. They're, they haven't been, uh, I guess, lay aside is the easiest yeah. word for yep. people. Um, then the, the church has to uh, provide some sort of support for them. If they're still a priest, quote unquote, even though their faculties have been removed, they can't present themselves as priest, yep. they have to be supported in some way, uh, and that would include housing for some who do not have homes. Got it. Um, that's, that's not a secret. <laughs> Not yep. Work. Okay. That, 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 listen, that, that we have the same difficulty with those who are registered sex offenders. Uh, people don't want them living in their neighborhood, and and uh, but you know the law is the law, and that plays a big role in all of this. Uh, I, and, I, and the other yep. part of this, I just have to say, is um, what the church did in the past and how it handled it, how it handled child sexual abuse. It's it's very clear was not well done thirty yep. or forty years ago, and we say that and re say that. Um, and our commitment is to those who have been hurt and try to help with their healing. And I realize that for some, our attempts don't do that. But right. our commitment is that. And we do care about those who have been hurt. Bishop Cunningham wasn't around, Bishop Moynihan wasn't around when these these terrible crimes took place. Yeah. Um, and they're trying to implement all the steps of the Charter for the Protection of Children and Young People. And they're doing it very well. And there are always going to be some things that you can do better because we are a human institution. Um, and I just in no way, shape, or form want your listeners to think that the church does not care, that the church doesn't own up to the fact that in past years, and when we've all read it, we're living it. Yep. Um, things could have been done very differently. And people were hurt. And we're trying to help them with their healing. But I do realize that sometimes... We can't do all that we that we want to do where it isn't perceived that we're doing all that we want to do for those folks who are still hurting. Um, and all we can do is, is keep our efforts up there, um, keep talking about it, have programs in place to keep our children safe, um, and, and ensure that we don't have priests who are in our churches or doing ministry who have any credible allegation of abuse, and we don't. Um, what we're trying to deal with now are folks who have the courage to come forward, which is what they do. They have the courage to come forward and said, I was hurt 30 years ago, and I can say that now. All right. If there is a silver lining in any of this, it's the fact that people can now come forward and say, I was hurt, and I hope you believe me, and we do, and the community does. So there, there are some very positive things that have come out of this very painful part. Uh, history in the church. All right, Danielle Cummings, I really appreciate your uh, your candor, and uh, we, we appreciate you coming on this morning. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, Danielle Cummings with the Catholic Diocese in Syracuse. Uh, really a pretty, uh, a pretty good explanation. Uh, WIBX Utica Rome News coming up one minute.